but there are also dudes that make film that are actually frustrated musicians. And I talked to a guy named John Carpenter, and I don't know if you know who he is. Round of applause for John Carpenter. All right, all right. Okay, I guess you ought to know Snake Plissken then. You don't know who Snake Plissken is? Yeah, I heard he was dead. I heard he was dead. No, he's not dead though. Anyway, there's a film that he did, the music, and uh, he's done a lot of music for his films. But this one was the most successful theme he did. And it was from a movie called Escape from New York. And Kurt Russell's in it. And it, it's kind of good because he almost does the, you guys might know him from the, the Grindhouse films. Should I say that? Nah, people know him from other shit, but he was really, really kind of badass in this thing as this action hero who wore way too tight leather pants, granted. But everybody thought he was dead. Everybody went into this old New York thing. And this story basically is, it's a prison. Manhattan's a prison, it's walled off. But this guy, John Carpenter, he knew two things. If you put a helicopter in a shot, it makes it look expensive. That's true for all you filmmakers, that's true. Just get a helicopter, rent a helicopter. You don't have to have it moving, just have it in the shot. People are like, damn, production value. And number two, he wrote the, the music to this stuff. And I asked him, what was your motivation? He's like, well, essentially all the songs for all my films are based on Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. And that's the doom doo doo da doom doom doo da doom doom doo da And you can fit it into this. And you're like, holy shit, John, you're not fucking with me. He's like, nope. Anyway, he did another movie that was kind of messed up. And I, for you younger folks, I don't know if you're movie buffs, but he, uh, you ever hear of Salt and Precinct 13, but the original? Because they redid it, and it was really messed up. And being a dad now, I don't know if I could watch it and go, damn. But the kid gets shot in the, in, by this gang. They just You want to hate this gang so much. And John did the, the music for that. But the way he captured these dudes, I mean, they were like this kind of like Rainbow Coalition asshole post-punk guys. And like you look at him, you'd be like, it's like the Warriors could beat them up, you know? <laughs> it was like that, that far afield, but it was LA. Apparently the Bloods and the Crips made a truce with the white boys. That's another joke I didn't think was gonna go far. <laughs> and it didn't. But you know, so Assault and Precinct the thing in the original, now with Lawrence Fish. <laughs> no, please, please. The more the merrier. But what I'm trying to get at is sometimes it's out of necessity that people do things that aren't comfortable for them. Now, when he did this, I mean, he told me that, yeah, it was just some stuff. I was watching the film, and this is how I felt. And I was like, that's great, because, you know, you made the film, so you're feeling along the same lines of, of how you were feeling as the director in the music. And it's kind of cool. But you hear that? <laughs> if you don't let Zeppelin, that's... Boom, bubble, babble, boom, bubble, babble, ay, ay, You know that song, right? If you like Led Zeppelin, you know. But anyway, that was what he's basing stuff on. But it was still kind of cool because if you didn't know that, you're like, love that synth, Dre. I mean, it's pretty fat for, you know, a dude who didn't think he was a musician. And he did it because he didn't have a lot of money. He already spent most of the money on the helicopter. So he's like, I'm going to buy a Moog with the last thousand dollars we got in the budget. I want to see what the fuck we can do. But as far as that goes, I really love John Carpenter. I love the fact that he was brave enough to put this music out.